In this video you will learn everything that you need to know about Angular directives, about structural and attribute directives and how to create your custom directives of these types. And actually inside Angular we have three different types of directives. We have component directives, structural directives and attribute directives. And actually when we are just creating a component like maybe child, this is considered a directive. Yes, we are naming it component, but essentially this is component directive. To create a component we are using component decorator and inside we have a template. This is the main difference. When we are talking about attribute directives, then we are defining them like this. So let's say that we have a div and on it we have some directive, for example foo. And here inside we have just some text. And actually this foo is an attribute directive, which actually means this is a directive which provides some behavior for our element on which we are applying this directive. Most important difference is that we don't have a template inside our attribute directive, but only inside component directive. So when we are creating attribute directives, we simply apply some behavior or some styles on already existing element. And inside Angular the most popular attribute directives are for example ng-class or ng-style that we are using to change the behavior of existing component. And the last thing that we have is structural directive. And this is a directive which changes the structure of our DOM. For example, if we will write here ng-if, then it is a structural directive. Typically you will see a star symbol, which means that this is a structural directive. Additionally to that we can write ng4 and this is also an example of structural directive. So if you are getting a question on the interview, then you need to name these three types of the directives. Component directive, attribute directive and structural directive. Now let's create a custom directive and we will start with attribute directive. Let's say that we just want to create a simple directive which will change the background of our element. Let's say that here we have a div and inside we have some text, for example this is some text. And on this div we want to apply our directive and let's name it highlight. Now we must create this directive. And here we can name it highlight.directive.ts. Now inside we are exporting our class highlight directive and we are using a decorator directive on the top. Inside we must provide a selector and here we are not writing it like inside a component directive, we are using here square brackets and then highlight as a name. So this is the selector that we created and this is our usage, this is just an attribute. And what we are getting inside our directive is a reference to the element where we are touching our directive. This is why here inside our constructor we can get access to the element. So here we have element ref and this is our element ref. Now here I want to write implements after view init because we want to be sure that our element is there. Now we can write ng after view init and here I can console lock this element ref. But this is not all, we must register our directive. This is why I am jumping inside a module and we are registering our directives just like we are registering components inside declarations. This is why here I can write highlight directive and now we registered our directive. Let's look in browser, we are getting here this is some text. This is just our div and inside our console we are getting element ref. This is a reference and inside we have a native element to this div. This is where we can write any logic to this DOM element that we want. For example here let's say that we want to change the background color of our element. We can write here this dot element ref we are getting access to native element which is a DOM element and here we can write style background and let's just assign here yellow. As you can see in browser it is working and now our element has background yellow. Another thing that you for sure need inside directives, you want to pass some data to it so you can use it in your behavior. This is why here we can add input just like we are doing inside our components. And let's say that we are providing a color inside. So our color must be a string and we want to default it to yellow that we just used. Now here instead of this yellow I can write this dot color and our color will be either applied from the parent or we will use yellow color. 
Now here I want to open our parent and inside our highlight we can provide an additional attribute color and we are providing it in exactly the same way like we are doing with components. Let's check if it's working. I am reloading the page and now our text has background red because we changed it through the input. So when we are using attribute directives, when we need to change the behavior or styling of our element that is already there. Now let's create a structural directive. And essentially I want to tell you that I never wrote custom structural directive in the last 5 years. But if for some reason you need to do that, this is how you can do it. What we want to do here, we want to create a structural directive just like ng if, but it will be the opposite, it will be unless. This is why here I want to name our file unless.directive.ts. Now here we are doing exactly the same thing, we are exporting our class unless directive and on the top we must add a decorator which will be directive and inside we must provide a selector, in our case I will name it unless. Our next step will be to register this directive, this is why let's jump inside the module and register it here, it is unless directive. And now let's try to markup inside our app component. When we are talking about structural directives, you will for sure want to write a star like we are writing div star ng if. But essentially this star is just a sugar and the code to which we are transforming this star is ng template. This is why here I want to show you both cases. So here we have our ng template and inside we have some markup. For example we have a div with some text. And here we can write for example this is some text. Now here on our ng template we can apply our directive unless and as you can see I am using exactly the same syntax like with normal directive. So inside here we want to provide a condition, this is why I will open app component and create here a property condition which I will set to true. Now here we can provide this variable condition inside our directive unless. As you can see in browser we are getting an error cannot bind to unless since it is unknown property of ng template. And essentially this can be super confusing for you because here we are not getting an error regarding our directive at all. But what we must do, we must jump inside our directive and create an input unless. Which actually means in this case we are applying the directive and directly the input just like with ng if. So what we want to write here, we want to register an input. But the main idea is that we want to do some behavior when we are changing the input. This is why I will write input as a setter. So here I am writing input and we are using set unless and here we are getting our condition and our condition is boolean and now inside I just want to console log our condition so we see what we are getting. Let's look in browser. As you can see now we are not getting an error anymore, we are getting here condition true. Which actually means our directive is successfully applied through this code and we are providing here an input and we are getting to this setter. Which actually means this code is exactly the structural directive because all structural directives are created by using ng template. And this code is exactly the same like this, so we can just put here our div and I want to apply here a directive, so I am writing here star unless and inside I am providing a condition. As you can see the syntax is exactly the same like for example in if, and we don't have any error here and we are getting two condition true because here we must render two elements. So now we must implement our directive to the end because we don't see any content. Let's jump to unless directive and what we want to do here we want either to render our element or not render. And in order to do that we need inside constructor several things. First of all we need here a template reference and this is our template ref of type unknown. Why unknown? Because we don't know what is inside our ng template. And the second thing that we need here view container and this is view container reference. Which actually means what we want to do here, sometimes we want to render our ng template and sometimes not. So if our condition is true then we don't want to render it because we are not building if, we are building unless. This is why here we are writing this dot view container dot clear. So we completely remove our element else and here we want to render it. This is why here this view container create embedded view 
and inside we're providing our this.templateRef, which actually means here we simply get ng template and we choose ourselves what we want to do with that. Let's check this out. As you can see, we don't see anything inside browser because our condition isn't true. And when this condition isn't true, then unless is false. If we change it here to false, then two elements will be rendered. These are our both unless elements. And as you can see here, we wrote them differently with star, which is just a sugar, or with ng template, which is exactly how Angular transforms this star logic. And actually, if you're interested to know what is ng model inside Angular and how does it work, make sure to check this video also.